Since the beginning of the war between Israel and Hamas, different people have been looking at uh, different ways and how to contribute and serve in this difficult time. Because, of course, not only the nation of Israel has been impacted, but many, many individuals and even artists want to serve and contribute. And God has been impressing on them uh, different ways. So let's go visit artist Grace Alon and see what's her story and how she is contributing. Hello. Hello. Come in. Hello. <laughs> So here we are with Grace Alon in her mm -hmm. beautiful home in the Judean Hills. Thank you for having us. A pleasure. You've written a beautiful story that really its bottom line is to help the nations pray for Israel in these, the, one of Israel's toughest times. Mm -hmm. And it's also meant for the younger generation, isn't it? That's Can you tell right. us a little bit more about it? Sure. Um, so about a week and a half after October the 7th, I was at home, all my children were home, all the schools had been cancelled, as you know. And I started to see that some of my friends were beginning to do wonderful things to provide equipment and food for all the soldiers, to support the survivors or the refugees from what happened in the South. There were so many needs. So at many once. needs. And there was an outpouring of just love and help from Israel, as there always is. And I felt I, that I was kind of. Um, restricted by the needs at home and that I wasn't so available to practically help but I wanted to do something positive and so I was standing in the kitchen washing up or something and I said God is there a way that you can use my creative gift, gifts to shine a light and several hours later a story began to form in my mind and it was a story to explain the spiritual battle behind the war um, so it came with a strong urge to start writing it down. But I thought, oh, there's no point starting yep. because as you know, <laughs> you have three little kids at three home. Three little kids is very difficult. I thought after five minutes, I'll have to stop. But the urge was so strong that I grabbed my laptop and I started writing and I wrote for three hours straight, which you'll know is... <laughs> is a miracle in itself. My children just played quietly. The youngest is three. And um, not just that, but the way that the words were flowing, I just felt like they were flowing from the heart of God. It was so smooth and natural and it came with so much passion and so much hope. Um, it was really a wonderful experience. It's like a gift. Yeah. Um, and you know, this project was such a gift to me. Israel is such a small place that every single person in this nation knows somebody it's who affected, right? has been affected very personally, mm -hmm. either who's, who was murdered or who is a hostage or who is in Gaza fighting mm -hmm. on the front line, risking their lives. And there's not a person in the country who doesn't mm. wake up, who hasn't woken up every day since 7th of October with this deep ache in their stomach. You know, it feels like our hearts are, in, are there. Yeah. And just the trauma of it, and then on top of just dealing with all the trauma of it, we would wake up every morning, you know this, you turn on the news, you look on your social media, and you, you just experience all this criticism and accusation and just heartlessness. Against Israel. Against Israel. And, yeah. and along with bad news, just mm -hmm. hoping for good yeah. news, but bad news. And so for me to get up every morning, my, my children eventually returned to school. And so I had six hours every day, which I poured into this project and, you know, creating beautiful art and connecting to God's heart and with a desire to shine out light and shine out truth, to push back darkness and impact this situation it was really a gift to me it was so strengthening and it gave me something to focus on that was filled with hope it seems like god strengthened you with the verse with the spirit with the promptness of your heart and this yeah. is meant to strengthen others it's going to so. bless others um what what would you say is your hope ultimately um that your that this story will bring yeah so quite a few hopes um, one thing I want to say, we just heard an Iron Dome interception and while I was recording the voice recording for the story, each chapter was only two or three minutes long and yet I would be recording, I was managing to do this thing I'd never done before and all of a sudden, boom, you know, in the first 
month or so, there were so many rockets coming from Gaza and then so many interceptions, there were so many bangs, as well as the fighter jets going overhead. Right, it's the so, reality of the true literal war in the background. Right, so that was another challenge to the project, yeah. but it got done yeah. and um, shortly after writing the story, I read an article that said that there is still strong support for Israel in the West, but it's mainly among the older generation. Mm -hmm. And there was this question, what's going to happen in 10, 20 years? Did we lose the younger generation? Right. And, and the impact that can have on Israel, are they going to be supported by the, by the nations mm -hmm. in, in the fight against these people who want to annihilate us? And um, so then I was encouraged thinking, wow, this story that God has given me is engage can be engaging for children. And who knows, maybe these parents or grandparents or Sunday school teachers who have a passion and an understanding about Israel could use this story, could show this story to the children in their families and in their churches and use it as a way to open up the discussion about what is God's heart for Israel and what are his purposes that are still uh, vitally important for this special people. Because even though these children are not directly related to the war in Israel, uh, they can be taught about Israel through this yes. war. And they can make a difference, not only through prayer and through standing for Israel, but we know in Joel that one day God is going to judge the nations according to how they they yeah. stood for Israel. And so for the sake of also of their own nations, mm. these these children need to know that if you bless Israel, you will be blessed and that God will judge those who, who um, go against his purposes in this strategic place where he will one day reign. So I personally um, heard your story and uh, had my children listen to the story and it's, it's beautiful, beautifully written. Your voice is outstanding, <laughs> your oval voice. Um, thank you. Thank you guys for sharing your story and I really hope this story will go out. So we'll put a link uh, below. You'll see uh, the link to your YouTube channel where the story is. And I believe that God has positioned others. I actually believe that God wants to raise up artists and writers. So could you, could you say to our viewing audience and speak directly sure. to them? <laughs> so I actually believe that God wants to raise up a wave of artists and writers and people with other giftings to flood the internet with stories and songs and images and poems and videos that can beat back the darkness and can release truth and hope and light about God's heart for Israel and also his kingdom at this time of darkness. And maybe God is calling you for such a time as this. And Grace, tell us a little bit more about your other artwork because you're not only in story writing you're mainly or you started off with laser cut beautiful mm -hmm. projects sure i actually started off with uh, hand cutting artwork and um you know i'm i'm not jewish but i grew up in a family that understood israel and my dad once sat down myself and my brother and sister and opened the bible and showed us how Israel, the modern state of Israel, is a miracle that was prophesied 3,000 years ago or so. And, um, and that God still has purposes for Israel. And he was grounding it in the word of God. That is so important. Yeah. L looking at the word of God as a basis to our beliefs. Yeah. So we had um, family in Israel and I decided to come out and spend time on my aunt's kibbutz. And while I was here, I fell in love with Israel. I had a very deep connection and God started showing me in Romans and other places, his passion for Israel and his, his dreams for them. And I wanted to be part of that. And so I came and went for a while and eventually I met my Israeli husband. So I fell in love with Israel first and then I fell in love with an Israeli. <laughs> And at our wedding, I, it was a very deep moment for me, a significant moment when I, I spoke the verse to him from Ruth, which says, your God will be my God and your people will be my people. Um, 
And I knew that I was being joined into the people of Israel, not just spiritually, but in that moment that I was going to be living in Israel and raising my children here and standing with the Jewish people. And so um, as I began to develop art, I wanted it to be art that um, that was prophetic, that would remind people of God's promises about Israel and would somehow lift Israel up. I think art has a way of elevating and and showing the splendor of a culture. Um, and so I'll show you a few, <laughs> a few of my artworks. Mm. This is from Isaiah 62. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest um, until he establishes Jerusalem to be a praise on the earth about the watch. You know, we see a trumpet like calling mm -hmm. on the Lord. Yeah. Right? So. And Jerusalem in the background. And this is about, mm. this is from Romans about being grafted in. Grafted and we, in. Yeah. Right. So we know that we, uh, the Gentiles, have been grafted in to the olive tree of faith um, and the promises of Israel through Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. But this is actually the promises about when the Jewish people will be regrafted into the tree. This is something that God has planned for Israel to be a blessing and a light for the world. As and they... I love it. Thank you, Grace. And it's obvious you went through a journey and you're bold, you're courageous through the spirit <laughs> of God. And one point of it was not being afraid of other people being angry at us. That's another level of maturity that we can all learn from because um, it's so nice when other people like us, right? right? But that's not always the calling or the need. Yeah, it's a sacrifice to uh, to stand up for truth sometimes. Yeah. And I, I want to be that person. Mm -hmm. And you are that person. <laughs> God you. bless you. And you. I, we hope this video will help you pray for Israel, yeah. stand with Israel. Thank you for your support. Until now, if you're watching this, we assume you're supporters. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for your support and you can support Grace as well as the website is listed below and her YouTube channel as well.